Hey everybody, it's Ben from Peninsula Camera here, and today I'm going to be talking you through one of the new lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system that Panasonic has come out with. I'm going to be taking you out on a spin tonight with the new OM system OM5, and we're going to be doing a bit of astrophotography with it. Assuming the weather doesn't change, we should have some really nice conditions for it. Now a lot of people will say that you need a really nice full frame camera with a fast lens to get the best out of the Milky Way at night. But what we're going to do today is we're going to show that there are some lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system that actually let it reach the same level as the full frame cameras in terms of light gathering capability. So the lens we're talking about today is the Panasonic 90mm f1.7. So the main benefits of this lens in comparison to other lenses is mainly its size, its weight and its cost. So a lot of comparisons will be drawn to lenses like this, which is the 20mm f1.8G from Sony. It's a really nice fast and wide prime that gives you really nice astro results. Now this lens here is actually giving you a slightly wider focal length while still letting in a really nice amount of light. It's also about half the size of the Sony one, as you can see here, and recommended retail comes in at about half as much. So it's a really good option for those Olympus OM system Panasonic shooters out there who are looking to get a really nice wide fast angle lens perfect for capturing the Milky Way or getting those really nice astro landscape photos. So I'm gonna head out later on tonight and take a couple of different photos with the nine millimeter lens. We're gonna be using live composite mode to get a couple of star trails, see how that looks. And then I'm also gonna be capturing the Milky Way just to see how much detail you can pull out of that while shooting wide open at F1.7. And we're gonna see how sharp the lens actually is. All right. So we are in significantly colder weather now. So the good thing about this lens is it's f1.7 aperture. Let's in a whole lot of light and that works in conjunction with its really wide angle, giving you the ability to get both the landscape and the sky in frame. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my camera in manual mode and I'm going to set it to around 20 seconds, we'll say. Now one thing we can also do is go into our settings here and turn on, if we go down to D for display and then across the live view boost, I'm going to turn that on for manual mode and set it to on too. And that way it's going to raise the uh, exposure a bit so we can see and make composition adjustments. Now you will notice that the camera is not able to focus effectively on the stars and that's because most cameras can't. Now, one of the new features of the OM5 is actually the Starry Autofocus Mode, or Starry AF. I'm going to half press the button for a second just to make sure we're focused, and then push the button. We're set to a 15 second exposure, so we will wait those said 15 seconds for this to go on. We're going to get a bit of streaking from the cars going past, but hopefully it should be really good. And there we have it. And if we zoom in, those stars are tack sharp. So there we have our Milky Way shot. It's really easy to focus on the stars like that. And with a lens like this, it really is a great combination for astrophotography when you want to travel small and light. So the next kind of shot I'm gonna show you is what's called a live composite shot. Now this kind of shot doesn't exactly require a really fast wide lens like the uh, Panasonic F1.7. In fact, I've done it before with little plastic body cap lenses that are at a constant aperture of F8. So you do not need a whole lot of light gathering in your lens to do this. You can make it work with pretty much anything you can mount to the camera. So that's great. It means if you've only got your base kit lens that you've started off with, you can still get a really nice shot like this. And it doesn't require any sort of editing in the computer. It can all be done in camera just to keep things nice and simple. So we're gonna move our camera over to the B mode or bulb and we're gonna move our back dial along until we get to live composite. Now when you first do this you'll notice your screen is really dark so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the menu button and it's gonna change our composite settings so how long we want each exposure to go for. I'm gonna set mine to 60 seconds just so I can get the most amount of light in and because for the kind of shot we're doing star trails don't really matter. You can now see we've got a plus three on the exposure compensation down there, which means that our images are gonna come out really bright. So I'm actually gonna go down and turn down our ISO a fair bit. So even 200, we're still gonna be overexposed a little bit. I do like to have my shots of the night sky overexposed a tiny bit though. So I'm gonna take a test shot and see how it looks. So we're gonna take our initial exposure. 
So it's gonna take one shot to sort of set as the base image. Now, because we did set our exposure time to 60 seconds, it's gonna take 60 seconds to take this base exposure shot. Now that we've got our base exposure shot, we can make any adjustments that we deem necessary. So for example, if the shot is too bright or too dark, we can go through and we can change our ISO or our aperture or even our exposure time and then try again. However, if you are happy with how the shot looks, we simply just push the shutter button again and it starts shooting. Now, because we've set an exposure time for 60 seconds, it is going to take 60 seconds for each frame to update. So every 60 seconds, the image is going to update and you'll see how your star trails grow. So it's going to start off small, but eventually as you go on throughout your exposure, you'll see those star trails grow and grow. So we're going to leave this here for around half an hour to an hour and come back to it then and see how it looks. So it's been around 45 minutes and we're now done with our final exposure, which we have on screen here. Now, this was all done in camera, so we haven't had to take it into a computer or edit it or anything like that. We just get these sort of star trails right out of camera. Typically, if you would do that with any other system of camera, you'd need to create multiple images, stack them together in Photoshop. It takes quite a while to do. It's an extensive workflow. So it's really nice to have this sort of done just in camera for you. So now we've got our final composite image and it's just saved as a regular JPEG or RAW file depending on how you wanted to save it. And the good thing is we completely avoid doing anything in Photoshop. So it's all done in camera. There's no need to take hundreds of images and blend them together, spend two hours in front of the computer. It's all done in camera, which is a real time saver. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at not only the Panasonic 9mm F17, but also the astrophotography capabilities of this great camera here. It really is nice having such a small and light package that can punch well above its weight when it comes to light gathering capability and astrophotography. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you check out our website or come and visit us in store. We're always happy to have people come in and ask questions about their new products. Also, if you're interested in seeing more, then make sure you subscribe to our channel because next week my colleague Gavin will be having a look at some of the other features of the OM Systems OM5.